We're going to fold in more voices as this conversation continues at 35 past the hour. Cokie Roberts, though, uh, we were talking in the break a little bit about how Mitt Romney, you think, is actually stepping on his own foot as this election goes on. Right, because it, we keep seeing that the conservatives aren't rallying to him, but he keeps trying to woo them. And the more he tries to woo them, the more he drives away independent voters, who, which is his whole electability aura is among independents. And he's driving them uh, further away. It raises and, uh, the question as to what is his base. Well, the, he has no base. And uh, and even the question of experience, in our last ABC poll, people thought that Newt Gingrich's experience was better than Mitt Romney's experience to be president. So people aren't buying the businessman thing either. Oy. So, uh, yeah, he's, he's got a, a tough road here. And what I'm hearing much more from Republican operatives is that they're focusing on the Senate. Just the Senate is everything because they're looking at this presidential race and not feeling very good about it. Mm -hmm. I want to bring, uh, Carl, I want to go to you, but uh, let's fold into the conversation. Republican Senator from Pennsylvania, Senator Pat Toomey, good to have you on the show this morning. Uh, right, make Carl, you can take it to Pat, but uh, Republicans have a problem, don't you think? I mean, and that problem is playing out as we watch this election pass by before our eyes. Uh, would you agree, and we'll let Pat respond, that they have no clear conservative leader? Well, I think, race. look, they've got a wounded front-running candidate who's likely to get more wounded as we get deeper into the, into the process. I'd like to ask the senator, though, uh, look at those stories in the Washington Post this morning about the need for institutional reform uh, in the House of Representatives in the Senate, uh, showing the huge effect of pork back home, uh, kind of crony cronyism that nobody in this country wants to see. Why is it that the leadership of the House and the Senate and both parties can't get up and say <laughs> we're going to make institutional reform our big issue and have a consensus on that. Well, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. As you may know, I've got a bill with Claire McCaskill that would ban all earmarks. Uh, earmarks are the heart of the, the story that the Washington Post has written about, and certainly it does create the impression that there are members who may have used earmarks to feather their own nest. And we know in the past this has happened. Uh, Duke Cunningham is in jail today because he was convicted of this. So we've got a temporary moratorium, but it can be subverted. It is uh, only in place for another year. Uh, I think we should institute a legislative ban. And the Republican leadership in the Senate voted with me and Claire McCaskill in support of my amendment to ban earmarks. Um, I'm not going to give up on this. We lost the vote last week. I'm going to introduce this amendment. Uh, to the uh, highway bill that we're going to take up later this week. Mm -hmm. And I hope we can pass it because I agree we do need the institutional reform. Joe and then Dr. Sachs. Hey, Joe? Pat Toomey. Yeah, yeah, Pat Toomey, uh, let's talk about Mitt Romney's problems. Obviously, you and I have been critical of our own party over the past 10 years for spending too much, too many right. deficits, too high debt. Uh, sort of the big government republicanism that we don't want repeated again over the right. next four years. Uh, is that Mitt Romney's biggest problem, that, that conservatives still don't trust him to be a small government conservative? I, you know, I, I think we've just got a series of very intriguing candidates in this race. We've got a lot of tumult, and it's no, but it's been a, it's been a fascinating race. No candidate's perfect, right? Everybody's got their baggage. But you know, just a week ago, Mitt Romney racked up a pretty amazing win in Florida. Rick Santorum had a fabulous night last night, no question about it. Uh, but there's no perfect candidate. I'm confident in this process. The voters will sort it out. Okay, but Dr. Sachs, there's baggage, and then there's baggage. I mean, a lot of what? laughter on the set. <laughs> wow. Uh, Go ahead, Jeff. Senator, we loved intrigue. We all enjoyed that term right. enormously. Very good. Uh, but good. I wanted to I'm ask glad, you back. I'm glad back, to help. <laughs> Senator, back to the reform issue. Is yeah. uh, insider trading part of your uh, legislative proposal? also because we there are a lot of insider trading scandals throughout Congress right now and it seems that again the House leadership on the on the Republican side is uh, stalling on, on addressing the insider trading uh, uh, loopholes that uh, Congress seems to have well uh, look I think that the same rules and laws that apply to everyone else need to apply in Congress with respect to insider trading I happen to think they already do but lest there be any doubt there's another bill that will absolutely reiterate that that's a separate bill it's passed the Senate I think it is going to pass the House and and eventually be signed into law eventually relatively soon I think my effort is separate not inconsistent but separate from that and it focuses just on earmarks
<laughs> Great. Good, good to hear that. I wonder if you could just say a word about what's happening with payroll tax uh, negotiations right now. Uh, well, I'm not at that table, but uh, my understanding is that uh, those negotiations have been stymied. Um, that's uh, something new here in Washington, that we've uh, <laughs> run into some gridlock. Um, so, um, I yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty frustrating. I think uh, we should have put this behind us uh, back in December, but uh, uh, hopefully we'll get this resolved soon. So, Koki Roberts, I'm, I'm, I'm reading pieces <laughs> of your, the book that you did the introduction for, and it's about the place of women in politics and the fact that they had a voice back in the 1880s, the, well, the way it, it filtered these through. Are, these are the letters of Clover Adams, Mrs. Henry Adams, and she was a great wit, but re re relevant to what the congressman exactly. is saying right now, she says in 1883, Congress bumbled on. Everybody laughs and it assumes spasms of virtue. No one is deceived by any reform pretenses. Uh, that is kind of the way it's been from the beginning. Um, and uh, Congressman Toomey, I wonder if the reason that you've had so much stymieing on payroll taxes and on the deficit and all of that has been this kind of uh, assumed virtue over earmarks because there's no way to make a deal anymore. You can't say to somebody, I, I'll do this for you, you do this for me, now we can get someplace. Um, yeah, I, d I don't think that you need earmarks, uh, this very wasteful process with no transparency where we fund things like bridges to nowhere and indoor tropical rainforests and all kinds of egregious programs, that that is a necessary component of the legislative process to get things done. I just don't agree with that. I think it's more likely that some of the gridlock results because in virtually any given cycle now, and certainly this cycle, control of Congress hangs in the balance. Mm -hmm. uh, let's face it, we think we're going to pick up the Senate on the Republican side, but it's not a given. Likewise, the House could be in play. So there's so much at stake politically, it's hard to get people to look past the election and do what's right for the country. Senator Pat Toomey, you intrigue me. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. Great to have you nice on, for having on me. the show. Uh, Cookie Roberts, thank you as well.